Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to look at how we can use external MIDI instruments in our Logic project. This might be helpful if you have some keyboards or synths and you really like the sound that they bring and you want to bring those into your own Logic projects. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in Logic, all we got to do is when we create a new track, and instead of software instrument, like we normally would if we're using any of the built-in sounds in Logic Pro, we're going to choose external MIDI. And there's a few options here that we can set, but they can also be changed at a later date. So it's not crucial to have these all set properly right now. But since we're here, we can go ahead and do that. So beginning is the audio input. So in order to get the sounds from your external keyboard or synth, we need to be sending audio from that keyboard to our audio interface. So that's going to be using the audio input. So right now I have the outputs of my Nord keyboard plugged into inputs three and four on my audio interface. Next is the MIDI destination. So Logic is going to be sending MIDI information back to your keyboard. So in this case, my Nord Electro. So that's what I have selected. And I'm just going to go ahead and select all for starters. Some keyboards and synthesizers will have USB to send and receive MIDI like my Nord keyboard does, but some might only have dedicated MIDI ports and others might even have both like this keyboard does. So if you have USB, then I suggest you just use that because that's the easiest thing to set up. If you only have dedicated MIDI ports, then you'll need a way to connect those to your computer. So some audio interfaces will allow you to hook up MIDI directly to the audio interface. But if not, you'll either have to look for an interface that has MIDI or you can get a dedicated MIDI interface as well. So in that case, you'll want to hook up the MIDI in from your keyboard to the MIDI out of your audio interface and the MIDI out of your keyboard to the MIDI in of your audio interface. And that way you can send and receive MIDI going both ways to and from your keyboard or external instrument. Next is audio output, and that's generally going to be audio output one and two. I'm going to go ahead and hit create, and you see here this opened up this external instrument plugin. And this is where, again, if we messed up any of the settings when we were first setting it up, we can change it. So our MIDI destination, for example, we can select that or MIDI channel or audio input. All those options are still available to us that we can change. Now, auto compensate latency. I suggest you have this checked on. This is just going to help compensate for any latency because there's going to be information going back from your keyboard or synth to your audio interface to logic and so forth. Now, send program change. You can choose to use this or not. I'll demonstrate in a minute, but this will allow you to change some of the patches of your synth or keyboard directly from Logic without having to press any of the buttons on your actual keyboard. So right now we should be all set up and ready to go. So if I play my keyboard, you're hearing the patch that is set on my Nord keyboard, which is Wurlitzer right now. And if I change the preset to a B3, we're hearing that as well. And anytime I change the patch, it's going to change the sound that we hear. Now let's go ahead and record something in to show you how there's some advantages to doing it this way rather than just recording straight audio from your keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and just add a session drummer just to have something to play along to. And I'm going to bring that tempo down.
Okay, so now that we recorded that in, if I double click here, now we have all the MIDI that we just recorded available to us. So if I made any mistakes, if I need to move some notes around, I can do that super easily. Or for example, that little note, let's just get rid of that. And if I wanted to quantize, I could select any of the notes I wanted to and quantize those however I deem fit. And then the other great thing is I can change the sound based on the patches of my keyboard. So right now we're set to the piano sound. If I press play, I can change any of my presets on my keyboard and it'll change the sound. And I also have access to all the different effects on my keyboard as well. So we'll get to hear those too. So as I mentioned before, if you like the sounds and effects that you get from your keyboard, then you can have those all ready to go for you in Logic as well. Now I mentioned the send to program change here. So if I click this and change the program, so this will basically change the preset of my keyboard. So right now I am at B21. If I go to zero, you see how this goes to A11 now. And now we're on a piano sound. But I'm just gonna uncheck that and go back to where we were before. So now that we've got our part all played in, we can either leave the equipment all set up as is, and when I hit play, you hear that it's indeed playing the sound from my keyboard. But if I wanted to create another track, with a new sound using my keyboard, then this would now be lost. So what you wanna do is commit this as an audio track. So there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So first off, let me just rename this. And since we settled on the Whirly, I'll just rename this Whirly. Now, as of Logic Pro 11, I can actually bounce this in place in real time, which is really the quickest way of doing this. So for that, all I have to do is right click up here, scroll down to bounce and join, and then bounce in place. And we can rename this really bounce, for example. The destination is gonna be new track. And the source will leave it, but how about we mute it? And the rest all looks good. So let's go ahead and click okay. and it's gonna play back the track in real time and create an audio file from that. And now I have the audio file right here on this track. So that's the easiest and quickest way of doing this. Now, if you're on a version of Logic 10, for example, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is create an audio track by going to the plus button right here, selecting audio, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create for now. And let's call this Whirly 
audio. I'm just going to mute my previous bounce. So up here on our MIDI track, which is currently muted because of the bounce in place. So I'm just going to go ahead and unmute that, which is Control M. And on our audio track that we just created, I'll select that. And under the input, I'm going to first switch that to stereo. So just click on this little circle. That creates two little circles. And instead of input one, two, I'm going to go to my first available bus, which is bus one in this case and select that. And then I'll go back to my external MIDI track and my output, instead of stereo output, I'm going to select bus one. And now if I record enable my audio track, I'll just open up the mixer so you can see what's happening a little bit clearer. So this is our MIDI track here. The output is going to be bus one. Our audio track, the input is bus one. So this MIDI track is getting sent to this audio track, and that's where we're going to be recording the audio. So that'll work like this. So we'll just hit record, and that's going to record into on this track. And there you go. So now we have our keyboard part saved as audio and we can go ahead and play with the keyboard and mess around and that track will be saved and stays as is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about setting up external MIDI instruments, please leave those in the comments below. I also want to thank you very much for all the likes and subscribes. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Logic Pro Ultimate Starter Pack. This includes my Logic Pro Hotkey Cheat Sheet, my audio recording checklist, my mixing guide, my gear guide, and my Logic Pro session templates. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.